always, raise your fist to truth. This is the story about dangerous UFO cults and murder. This is the story of what happens when someone gets stuck or trapped too deep down the rabbit hole of UFOs and aliens on the internet. There is substantial and supportive evidence that can show that some people get caught or stuck too deep in that rabbit hole. To some, UFOs and aliens on the internet becomes an obsession. An obsession so deep that some are willing to do anything to keep climbing down that ladder. Some people believe that by climbing further and further down that rabbit hole ladder and getting closer to the gatekeepers, those who hold the secrets that they will be given some secret knowledge that others just don't have. I've often wondered about some of the people I've seen or met on UFO Twitter. Many of those people spend 8, 12, or even more hours a day feeding their obsession. And their obsession only grows with each new promise of revelations soon to come. But all those revelations that these so-called messiahs of disclosure are out there promising everyone never seem to come. But they've sure got something new to sell you every so often, don't they? And isn't it funny how they never seem to deliver on the promise of that disclosure soon to come? And what about the people that are selling this delusional fantasy world to people with little or no evidence at times? Do they bear any responsibility for the negative impacts that the obsession with this delusional fantasy world can have on people's real lives? I have witnessed the damage that this unhealthy obsession can do to many people who get stuck too far down this rabbit hole. It can lead to lost jobs, lost marriages, people who have lost their children, people who have destroyed their lives, even killed themselves. And what about the people who stood there taking the money of these people, selling them this delusional fantasy world where disclosure is going to come any day now? where the government has alien bodies and flying saucers and soon will reveal the truth about it. What responsibility do those people have? When people's lives are destroyed, when marriages are destroyed, when people take their own lives, or when people get so far down this rabbit hole that they lose all sense of reality that they finally snap and murder those closest to them. 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 These are the true stories of murder in UFO land. Sadly, it happens more often than most people would ever imagine. Even sadder, almost none of the people selling the UFO narrative to the public dare mention this or even acknowledge it.
the further and further we go down this rabbit hole, the curiouser and curiouser it will get. This is Murder in UFO Land. Greetings and salutations, friends. Tonight, we will be debuting a new series for us here at True Seekers, Murder in UFO Land. Tonight's story is about a man named Christopher Gray, who many of you may remember from UFO Twitter. He had various handles, at UFO Researcher or at UFO Researchers, most prominently. Our theory our story tonight begins with his descent into UFO Twitter and his absolute obsession with alien UFO and conspiracy stories. As I researched this story, I kept asking myself if this tragedy could have been avoided, and maybe it could have if people had heeded the warning signs. I also asked myself if people feeding Christopher Gray's obsession with a steady diet of what I feel are mostly fake stories, I ask myself, do they have any responsibility for what happened here? And friends, I've got to tell you that I went deep down this rabbit hole, and tonight you will get to travel down this rabbit hole with me. Welcome to a very deep and very dark rabbit hole. Welcome to murder in UFO land. Now, the core story is about a murder, uh, but the core story isn't the entire story. And tonight, I hope to take you deeper into this disturbing story than anyone has ever gone before. Unfortunately, media reports about the actual murder are very few, but I will share those few with you for reference. I just ask you to remember that there is a deeper, darker story here. And tonight, I will share all I know with you about this deep, dark story. So we begin our presentation tonight with the uh, very few media reports about this event. One moment, let me make sure that I'm getting the right one first. Yes, we have uh, um, an article from the Scottish Sun. By the way, I will be sharing most or all of my research materials uh, for this story with anyone who cares about such things, uh, but the articles are referenced in the description of the video. The first comes from the Scottish Sun. Home horror, killer son who stabbed dad 110 times in Scott's home and filmed him as he lay dying detained at state hospital. A killer son who stabbed his dad 110 times and filmed him as he lay dying has been ordered to be detained at the state hospital. Christopher Gray, 49, bludgeoned father Alexander, 73, on the head, neck, chest, and arm in a frenzied attack at their home in Falkirk last February. He was later discovered by police still clutching a knife while kneeling over the pensioner who had passed away by then. Gray had faced a murder charge in December, but was acquitted after prosecutors accepted he was suffering from a mental disorder at the time. Doctors found he was suffering from paranoid schizophrenia when he set upon his dad. At the High Court in Glasgow today, Lady Stacy ruled he be held at the High Security Mental Health Facility at Carstairs, Lancashire. Gray, who followed proceedings via video link, was told by the judge, I know that you do not agree with the diagnosis, but take that you are prepared to their advice for treatment. You will remain in the state hospital. So very little coverage. Now, the next article, which I will be sharing with you, is a bit more detailed, and we get in to the portion of the story which I think is relevant to many of us from UFO Twitter. And this again is from the Daily Record in Scotland. Killer's son left Scott's dad with 110 stab wounds and filmed him dying on Twitter. That's right. He filmed his father dying on Twitter. 
Christopher Gray was found by police still clutching a knife while kneeling over his dead father. A killer son who left his father with 110 wounds filmed the pensioner on Twitter as he lay bleeding. Christopher Gray brutally attacked Alexander Gray, 73, at their home in Falkirk on February 23rd this year. This, of course, is 2021. The 49-year-old went online at 6.45 a.m. that morning and posted a video of his stricken dad. Police later forced entry after other relatives alerted them to their concerns. Gray was discovered still clutching a knife while kneeling over Alexander, who was already dead. Gray, who had no previous convictions, faced a murder charge at the High Court in Glasgow on Friday, but was acquitted after prosecutors accepted he was suffering from a mental disorder at the time. Prosecutor Alan Cameron told how there had been concerns about Gray days before the killing. He had been found by police rambling incoherently and walking in the middle of the road. He was assessed at the hospital, but was said not to meet the criteria for compulsory detention. Mr. Cameron went on to say prior to release, police and medical staff spoke to his father who indicated that this type of behavior was not unusual and he was happy to have him return to his property. But tragedy struck on that morning of February 23rd at the house. Gray posted the Twitter video with the message, down with Satan and his min minions. Mr. Cameron went on to state, it showed his father lying on the floor, wheezing heavily and apparently bleeding from the head. Gray appeared to be filming him while standing over him, making a series of bizarre comments. At 7.14 a.m., Gray called his brother, including stating to him he had smacked dad around a wee bit. The advocate, uh, Depute, said a further message containing references to similar matters was posted on his Twitter account 10 minutes later. The message tagged various other Twitter accounts, including those of famous individuals, and we have the list, friends, and we're going to be sharing that tonight. Those famous individuals are UFO celebrities. Gray went on to claim to his brother that he had pushed their dad, but that he was fine and he was now sleeping. Around 10 a.m., Gray then told his sister, Alexander, who is his father, was unconscious. It was then police were alerted and arrived soon after. Gray threatened he would blow the officers up if they came in. Backup was called and the police forced their way in around 11.15 a.m. Mr. Cameron said when they entered, they found Gray in the bedroom kneeling on the floor over his father and holding a knife. Gray dropped the blade before being handcuffed. The court heard Alexander, also known as Alistair, had suffered a total of at least 110 sharp force injuries to the head, neck, chest, and arm. Mr. Cameron stated all of these were inflicted by Gray repeatedly striking his father with a knife. The rest of the Gray family are devastated by his death and the manner of it. Gray is currently in the state hospital at Carstairs. He watched the hearing via video link. Two psychiatrists had prepared reports for the court. It was concluded that Gray was not, quote, criminally responsible, unquote, for what happened due to a mental disorder. Uh, his lawyer, Donald Findlay QC, defending said he is sadly now aware of what has been described in court. Gray will remain at Carstairs in the meantime for treatment after Judge Lady Stacy imposed an interim compulsion order. The case will call again in February. So as we see, there's very little, very little information about the actual murder, but I have done quite an exhaustive investigation into these events, and we have a great deal of information to share with you that shows a much deeper, darker side of the story. Um, and it's important to note that the core story isn't the whole story. You know, the core story, what we just heard, were, uh, it is the quick and dirty version of it. It goes much deeper. Christopher Gray apparently... Uh, was completely obsessed with UFO Twitter. And multiple sources confirmed to me that he spent every waking hour of his life on UFO Twitter and also watching and listening to content about UFOs, aliens, and conspiracies that he found there on UFO Twitter. All of these stories uh, provided to him by names familiar to all of us. Lou Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, 
Tom DeLong, George Knapp, Eric Davis, Jeremy Corbell, Richard Dolan, Grant Cameron, Project Unity, Ross Coulthard, and especially, most especially, Christopher and Ryan Bledsoe. He was, according to multiple people close to him that I spoke with, obsessed with Christopher Bledsoe. And Christopher Gray believed that since Christopher Bledsoe knew and interacted with all of his heroes, those UFO celebrities feeding him a steady diet of these stories, Christopher Gray believed that getting close to Bledsoe would get him close to all those heroes of disclosure, feeding him those stories that he had become so obsessed with. It is public record and uh, known that Chris Bledsoe knew and interacted with many UFO celebrities, including those that I've just mentioned, and also others like Jim Semivan, John Alexander, uh, and others. And in fact, you can buy Chris Bledsoe's new book right now, but not from me. Uh, we are going to share a graphic about Christopher Bledsoe, which to me is uh, very telling. And it's from a recent conference appearance of his showing his various claims. And this is uh, to display a, a very important point. Why is it that so many UFO celebrities are all interacting with, communicating with, and very friendly with Christopher Bledsoe. It may be because Chris Bledsoe is a one-stop shop for paranormal stories that you can sell to stupid people. Here is a, a graphic from so-called super experiencer Chris Bledsoe. He is uh, having UFO sightings, orbs of various sizes and colors, ET entities, fairy, fey, nature, or spirit entities. He's interacting with angelic or celestial entities, strange entities, Bigfoot entities, book to clarify in his dreams. He's interacting with, according to him, the Blessed Virgin Mary or the Lady. The Lady will become very important to this story and something that the rest of the media missed because Christopher Christopher Gray mentioned the lady in both of the recordings that he made on the day of the murder. Chris Bledsoe is also interacting with divine, having divine feminine encounters, encounters with ghosts or deceased people, poltergeists, or near one's house, objects moving, doors opening, knocks and footsteps. He is uh, experiencing a ports, items disappearing and are reappearing around the house. He's experiencing psi capacity in individuals activated, ESP, precognitive knowledges, knowledge, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, missing time, crop circles, hitchhiker effects. That is phenomena of following someone home after they visit at your home. He's experiencing powerful dreams, dreams teaching or being taught, physical traces, evidence of the phenomenon, body marks, weird smells, weird sounds, negative health effects, Positive health effects, phenomena caught on camera video, phenomena hard to catch on camera video, gifts or objects received from beings or the phenomena in general. The Oz factor, that is everything becomes silent before or during an encounter. Multiple witnesses to various anomalous or paranormal events episodes. The capacity to heal others. Telepathy. Downloads, that is large amounts of information being available all of a sudden. Mystical experiences of unity and love. So is it any wonder, friends, why so many UFO celebrities have gotten close to Chris Bledsoe? And by the way, many of them I am aware of have milked him for stories to sell their followers. This is very troubling to me considering the scant or some would say non-existent evidence of all of these claims. Look at this chart. This, my friends, is an absolutely ridiculous amount of claims. Uh, we've often talked here about staying in a lane, right? There's no lane for Chris Bledsoe. He is a one-stop shop for everything paranormal. And Christopher Gray, the murderer, was obsessed with Chris Bledsoe and his stories of all of these so-called paranormal happenings. So the 
gateway for Christopher Gray to both Bledsoe, these UFO celebrities, and many, many others was UFO Twitter. I We did a detailed analysis of his Twitter activity, and uh, we'll be showing some of the people he was communicating with and interacting with in the world of UFOs and aliens. UFO Twitter was Christopher Gray's obsession and uh, gateway to his obsession with stories of aliens, UFOs, and conspiracies. I am including a short piece on UFO Twitter for the benefit of those. We have to remember, friends, that some people are going to be watching this from the world of true crime and have no idea what this thing called UFO Twitter is. So for their benefit and for all of our benefit, I thought it would be good to include a piece about that. Let's watch, friends. UFO Twitter. For those unaware, it's a hashtag on Twitter. Christopher Gray was very active there. There he tweeted about aliens, UFOs, and conspiracies. UFO Twitter is a hashtag, but more than that, it's a place where people interested in UFOs and aliens gather from all over the globe. Not coincidentally, it's also a place where all the profiteering hucksters pushing their mostly fake stories, latest monetized videos or podcasts, and expensive conferences full of fake storytellers advertise and promote their wares to the true believers. Always being at the ready with yet another story to sell, another book, another documentary, another expensive online or in-person UFO conference, another monetized video or podcast you can click on. Christopher Gray was one of those true believers. An analysis of his Twitter feed shows he spent all this time consuming content about UFOs, aliens, and conspiracies. Somewhere along the way, Christopher Gray completely and totally lost his grip on reality. He became completely convinced that the stories being fed to him by these profiteering hucksters were completely true. And it drove him, quite literally, insane. Months before the crime Christopher Gray would become famous for, he committed other crimes, petty crimes, against users of UFO Twitter. He began to cyberstalk and harass many people on UFO Twitter. And in one case we obtained evidence for, he sent pictures of a female user's home with many threats against her. Available evidence, including private messages sent to us exclusively, seemed to indicate that Christopher Gray began to lash out and attack anyone who challenged his worldview about aliens and conspiracies. He began to threaten, intimidate, cyberstalk, and harass anyone who would challenge those UFO celebrities bringing him these so-called true stories that he began to believe 100%. Christopher Gray got lost in a delusional fantasy land, spoon-fed to him by selfish, profiteering UFO and alien hucksters. On UFO Twitter, Christopher Gray got lost, too deep down this rabbit hole, too far into the world of aliens and conspiracies, so far in fact, that it would become his new reality. And this new false reality he believed so strongly in would lead to murder. So friends, it's important that we remember Chris Bledsoe's story about the mysterious entity that he called the lady. Christopher Gray would mention the lady multiple times in recordings he made the day the murder took place. He would also mention the Bledsoe's directly 
in an email that he sent to many prominent UFO celebrities that he apparently had access to through email communications on the day of the murder. For Christopher Gray, UFO Twitter and the stories he consumed there became his obsession, and that obsession centered largely around Chris Bledsoe and his stories of the lady, the mysterious entity that Chris Bledsoe claimed to be in contact with. Christopher Gray was also apparently obsessed with climbing the ladder of the UFO world and getting close to those UFO celebrities who had fed him a steady diet of stories and conspiracies about aliens, New World Order, UFOs, and more. For Christopher Gray, UFO Twitter was his gateway to this obsession. Now, uh, we will share with you some of Christopher Gray's Twitter posts, which I think are very telling about his mindset. And we can see that many of the people that he was following, promoting, retweeting, or communicating with are people that we have covered here in the past, people that I believe are, uh, I struggle for a proper word. Uh, these people that he was is consuming these stories from, what I can tell you is that they largely sell what I believe to be largely fake stories with little or no evidence as true stories. And I believe that uh, that is quite irresponsible of them, considering how those stories may affect some people. So uh, we will be sharing bits of Christopher Gray's. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We're starting at the we're going to start in chronological order. Here he's sharing Project Unity. And I noticed in an analysis of his Twitter feed that he shared Project Unity quite often. For those unaware, Project Unity is one of those podcast people that I call the UFO circle jerk. Project Unity interviews many of these UFO celebrities selling fake or largely fake stories and does not do any fact checking, research, or hard questioning or demands for evidence. Project Unity is one of those outlets where UFO celebrities go and they know that Project Unity will help them sell their fake stories. So here he is sharing Project Unity, talking about uh, Tucker Carlson speaking with former De Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Christopher Mellon, and the director of the so-called groundbreaking documentary film, The Phenomenon, James Fox. Uh, and it gets, it gets better, though. We also have uh, him sharing Grant Cameron. Uh, he was interacting with and sharing many stories from Richard Dolan. Here we have uh, what I believe to be a completely fake story that Richard Dolan has made more money from than anyone selling a story with absolutely, to me, no proof or evidence, no verifiable proof or evidence, just a story. Uh, he is also sharing uh, also, Christopher Gray became convinced that UFO, or excuse me, that Twitter was censoring him and many other UFO celebrities that he followed, and indeed even made threats to UFOs. Here we have him sharing Spaced Out Radio, and you know I'm not going to comment on the individual on too many of these individuals, except to say that there exists here an, a distinct pattern that the people that Christopher Gray before the murder, was obsessed with sharing, communicating with, and consuming their content are largely people who I don't believe uh, present factual stories. Instead, they, they present less than factual stories as true stories. Let's, uh, let's leave it at that. Here we have him sharing Leslie Keene's interviews uh, and Ralph Blumenthal. He was completely obsessed with the 2016 articles and with Luis Elizondo's story, even attacking people. He was one of those people uh, that was very positive about Luis Elizondo telling the truth, and he would attack anyone on Twitter 
who said otherwise. Here he is again sharing Leslie Keene. We have him, uh, I'm sorry, we have him sharing also um, information about those senators that are so-called pro-disclosure senators like Marco Rubio and others. Uh, but a disturbing pattern exists here. Here we have him again sharing Project Unity. He shared Project Unity perhaps more than any uh, anyone, any other individual. And it's interesting to me that Project Unity is also connected to Ross Coulthard, and we'll hear more about another connection to Ross Coulthard here uh, in, in, as we progress in this story. Here we have him sharing uh, stories of the Skinwalker Ranch and Bob Bigelow. We also, again, he shared Richard Dolan stories and tried to tweet at and communicate with Richard Dolan here. George Knapp's The Mystery Wire and Bob Lazar stories. So as I began to do an analysis here, here we have him sharing something from Dr. Stephen Greer. Mr. Greer told everyone that he has been talking to someone who works in the basement of the Pentagon. This person has access to all 18 unacknowledged special access projects and that he has been educating Greer on where and what is being worked on. And then the expected and then he expected the room to believe it. So here's a very critical post about Stephen Greer, but he was sharing Stephen Greer material, who, again, tells unverifiable, I believe, completely fake stories with no evidence. That is the pattern. As I began to do an analysis on his Twitter feeds, the pattern that I saw emerge is that he is sharing, communicating with, tweeting at, and supporting all of these people who, in my opinion, share fake stories about aliens and UFOs. Here is some of the tweets that he tweeted, and these are largely repeating talking points from the UFO celebrities. Bodies have adapted to live in Earth and use a stick as a, a toll to eat ants. What they do, what do they possibly want from us? Even though it is late, it is not too late. There are many forms of aliens that are not hostile and willing to help us. Here's another disturbing tweet. They plan to wipe out more than five-sixths of the population so that they control the remaining easier and turn them into hybrids. Uh, and again, here he is sharing George Knapp stories. Here we have him sharing Jeremy Corbell. Uh, and he asks him, Jeremy, do you believe there has been a mass sighting that has been covered up due to what happened? That is by many people in the know, that if the world saw it, they would wake up fast, but explained away as something else to avoid panic. Thanks for the story. We'll check out. So he's communicating directly with many of these UFO profiteering fake story hucksters, in my opinion. Uh, oh, we got that one. And, and the last one is dated the day of the murder. This tweet is very disturbing. And he adds Jack Sarfati, well-known person in, in the world of UFOs. He says, I just caught Satan trying to create the Antichrist. Don't ever try launching anything or harm me or any of the innocents that you butchered and maimed in Satan's name. I am Jesus, not the Antichrist. I am also God. And there were previous signs to his unraveling and being mentally not well. And this made me wonder why no one intervened, attempted to get him help. But back to uh, Chris Bledsoe and the Chris Bledsoe connection. Um, so, you know, a detailed analysis is what I did of Christopher Gray's Twitter feed, and it revealed who he was interacting with. We've seen some examples tonight of that, who he was retweeting and communicating with. And in my view, these are the many bad actors in the world of UFOs, many of which sell provably fake stories with little or no evidence. These are, in my opinion, UFO profiteering hucksters who sell fake stories to the gullible true believers. We've covered many of these UFO celebrities in the past and detailed how they 
in my opinion, sell stories as true when they have when they have little to no proof of the story actually being true. One thing uh, all the people Christopher Gray uh, was following and consuming stories from had in common is they all profit from sometimes very fake stories that they push as true with little or no evidence that they are actually true. Um, it's also important to note that I have many sources during this investigation uh, that showed me very, very disturbing Twitter direct messages that were sent leading up to the murder. Christopher Gray was one of those people on UFO Twitter that would do very, some would say, illegal things uh, and attack people who did not agree with his worldview and also attack people who were questioning the stories of those UFO celebrities, which he considered heroes of disclosure. So Christopher Gray, leading up to the murder, begins to unravel and he begins cyber stalking, harassing, and very, very seriously threatening multiple people on UFO Twitter. Many of them were women. And we have been sent exclusively here screenshots of many Twitter DMs from multiple people. Most of those screenshots I am now in possession of are from females, from women. And it is very disturbing to read these messages and the threats, even threats of sexual violence in some cases, that uh, are included in these direct messages to people. These Twitter direct messages detail a pattern of harassment, threats, and cyber stalking, sp specifically directed against anyone who questioned his UFO celebrity heroes of disclosure. And in one case, probably the most disturbing case, Christopher Gray actually sent messages to a woman uh, who will remain nameless, uh, still very traumatized by these events. Christopher Gray sent pictures of that woman's house to her and threatened her and her family repeatedly. Now, if this were one message, it may not be so disturbing, but I am, in fact, have been in communication with multiple women who sent me direct messages leading up to the date of the murder where Christopher Gray was threatening murdering them, sexual violence against them, killing their family members. And many of those people were critical of his heroes, so-called heroes of UFO disclosure. So leading up to the murder, uh, he was threatening people, viciously cyber stalking people, sending people pictures of their homes, letting them know that he knew where they lived, sending them addresses. In another case, he called someone from UFO Twitter at her job and threatened her, letting her know that he knew both where she lived and where she worked. I will be releasing these Twitter DMs once redacted via a Google Drive link, which I will make available to anyone else, so everyone can see for themselves how Christopher Gray began lashing out at anyone who challenged his views on aliens, UFOs, conspiracies, or any of the people selling the stories that he considered heroes and was following obsessively. In some of those disturbing private messages, it seems that Christopher Gray was convinced that people, including the Bledsoe family, were somehow out to get him. And this brings us back to the Chris Bledsoe connection. Besides these UFOs, uh, these UFO fairy tale storytelling hucksters that he was spending all of his time uh, listening to, Christopher Gray was apparently obsessed with Chris Bledsoe and all of his stories. We saw that Chris Bledsoe has a great deal of stories about UFOs, aliens, interdimensional beings, Bigfoot, angels, demons, poltergeists, and more. So Chris Bledsoe uh, was a focal point for him, and all of his stories became a focal point for him. So we're going to look at some information about Chris Bledsoe and some of his story. But I need you 
it's very important that we pay very careful attention to Chris Bledsoe's talk of the so-called lady, the lady, because Christopher would mention the lady multiple times in his communications on the day of the murder. Multiple sources who were close to Christopher Gray confirmed to me that Christopher was convinced that he was communicating with the lady. And because of that, the Bledsoe family was somehow out to get him. He became increasingly paranoid and somehow became convinced that a vast conspiracy was being hatched against him and that an army of enemies, including the Bledsoe family, were intent on killing him and those closest to him, apparently in some effort to get him to stop communicating with the lady. So as far as Chris Bledsoe, as I mentioned, he was known to interact with and uh, even be very close to some of those UFO celebrities that Christopher Gray considered heroes of disclosure and that Christopher Gray was so obsessed with. And the reason for this, uh, Chris Bledsoe being so close to so many UFO celebrities is because he's chock full of fantastical stories about the paranormal, stories that many of them milked him for and sold to the to their gullible believers. Chris Bledsoe uh, essentially claims to be some kind of magnet for all manner of paranormal activity. And uh, we will see a, a short video here about that. When Please remember that what we're going to see here in this broadcast is just a tiny, tiny percentage of his very fantastical out-of-the-world claims made by this Chris Bledsoe. So here is uh, a retelling of the story of Chris Bledsoe. The Chris Bledsoe story, as summarized by Nick Hinton, part one of this encounter started on January 8, 2007, when Chris, three co-workers, and his son had an encounter that included a face-to-face -face interaction, which included hours of missing time. Chris did not want to share his story because he was afraid for his reputation, but he eventually contacted MUFON who created a documentary about his encounter, and they documented several anomalies including Chris being healed of Crohn's disease. During hypnotic regression he spoke about being taken on board the craft, where the occupants informed him that they were here to serve creation. However, the MUFON documentary made them look foolish and his family was ridiculed by the public. High strangeness continued for the next five years and Chris began to believe that the ETs were angelic. Chris stopped telling his story until 2012 when he met the lady. And this is when his experiences went from creepy to awe-inspiring. Check out my next video or Chris's thread if you want more information about the details of this event. Part 2 of the Chris Bledsoe story by Nick Hinton. Having just met the lady in 2012, high strangeness continued to occur including objects materializing out of thin air. The lady and these anomalies got the attention of Tom DeLong, Jim Simivan, and others from the CIA and NASA, and John B. Alexander, who was impressed by Chris's newfound ability to do remote viewing. At this point, Chris found out that the MUFON documentary was actually a hit piece that was orchestrated by people that do not want the spiritual aspect of UFOs being discussed. The higher-ups at NASA take the lady serious and believe she's been appearing to humans for thousands of years, and is here to help humanity transition into the age of Aquarius. She brings a warning that Mother Nature will literally shake us off of her if we are too destructive, and that the wisest path forward is by choosing love over fear. Nick states that he doesn't know if he believes all of it, but he at least knows the phenomenon is real, and that you look at this information presented with an open mind. Yes, and I have looked at the information that Chris Bledsoe uh, presents with an open mind, but I always come away uh wondering where the proof or evidence is and there was in fact uh there is substantial uh evidence that chris bledsoe fakes some of his so-called ufo encounters uh, or encounters with aliens i'm personally aware that his son ryan bledsoe for a time was posting absolutely ridiculous things on ufo twitter including a flashlight behind a Lego man, you know, a little Lego man toy sitting on a rock that he claimed was an extraterrestrial. Uh, this has led many uh, more skeptical minded people to sort of make fun of Chris Bledsoe and the Bledsoe narrative. 
And those uh, skeptics are always met with a great many attacks. Here we have an example of someone sort of uh, making fun at Chris Bledsoe's uh, apparent fantastical stories with little or no evidence. Uh, and many people, again, believe that there is substantial and supportive evidence that Chris Bledsoe fakes things in order to profit from the UFO community. Let's watch this, friends. This is the Bledsoe family. Solid object. I just walked out and asked for it to appear. And there it is. And right over the side. Right over the side. Thank you. There it goes. So every night for 15 years, uh, my dad experiences orbs and they show up and they're blowing balls of light and um, sometimes they get really close sometimes they fall away in the trees in the sky in the water it doesn't really matter but um, you know, it's an ongoing thing that happens in and around the oh my gosh <laughs> Oh, yeah. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I come out here to turn the gas up. Yeah. So this, my friends, is where the story takes a very disturbing turn. Uh, because throughout my research, I began to hear from different people, many of which would not do an on-camera interview. Uh, and, and really more disturbing than what I believe to be his largely fake claims are his claims, Chris Bledsoe's claims of being able to heal even terminal illnesses with ease, with the help of his alien friends or angel friends, perhaps. I was able to find multiple sources who spoke to me and told me stories uh, of a person named Jonathan Davies, who was, besides apparently being a researcher for Ross Coulthard, uh, was also apparently someone who recruited people into the alleged Chris Bledsoe cult, telling people, Jonathan Davies would tell people that Chris Bledsoe had the ability to heal even terminal cancer or other terminal illnesses. In all these stories that I heard from multiple sources, people were told by Jonathan Davies and others that Chris Bledsoe, through his talking to aliens and angels, perhaps, could heal people of even terminal illnesses and had done so many, many times in the past. Most of those people wouldn't do an interview with me, but I found one person who would give me an interview about this on camera and on the record. His name was Jonathan Young, and he told a disturbingly similar story to the stories I had already heard that others had told me. And so here, my friends, is part of that interview about Bledsoe and his claims of healing terminal illnesses. Did you want to explain, like, how is it that you got involved with these people, specifically some of them like Jonathan Davies or the others? Well, I didn't know Jonathan Davies. Um, I was part, I was a not that I can't I can't remember ever interacting with Jonathan Davies personally, um, you know, like one to one in telephone conversations or anything like that. Um, I was part I, I joined UFO Twitter in 2016. Basically, I was very interested in the Tom DeLong TTSA story. I'd been interested in the UFO story for a long, long time. Um, and of course, all of a sudden I've thought there's people here trying to get this story out, you know, so I was fixed and, um, and you, I was in the middle of talking with people in Twitter and it became all of a sudden this UFO Twitter appeared and everybody was starting to talk about it. Cause I was originally sort of on Facebook, you know, uh, as a lot of people are, I think, mm -hmm. I think, I think they evolved to become orangutans on Twitter, you know, um, and you just get in groups of people talking and it's, it, you, you, you can see it's actually become a, like a hive, you know, it's a, like a hive mind. It's, it's sure. Yeah. It's, it's that some of these people are absolutely evil, you know, they're nasty pieces of work. Um, 
if you and don't how did you, uh, I was going to say, how, how did you, so, so you had a daughter that was having some health issues and some of these people that you're interacting with hear about this. Can you talk about that? Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, right. Okay. I um, introduced myself to Jonathan Davies because of something else that had gone on. Um, and um, we started talking and he, he started, he was talking about, he was talking a lot about Christopher Bledsoe. Okay. And, and how he was curing, he cured people of this, that, and the other, and how he had a friend that had cancer, had had cancer and he cured them of it, you know, um so just me. just to be clear because i want to be very clear so jonathan davies is telling you that bledsoe is curing people of cancer and other it, ailments or it, yeah he cured he cured um he cured, he'd, he'd cured somebody that jonathan knew or had a friend that had been cured of cancer um and, and during uh, this time your daughter was having severe health problems right and yeah jonathan they, was aware of that I well, I made him aware of that. Uh, I, I thought I thought about it, and I thought, oh, you know, um, I wonder if it can help with um, Nina um, because we'd uh, she'd contracted a very um, intense strain of diabetes, uh, okay. which we thought was diabetes type one, but they're calling it like strain three, um, which is like one that means that it's very difficult to control um mm -hmm. even with the insulin so and the worst thing is in the first year um as the uh as it's taking a grip on the body and it starts to shut the pancreas down um she went from like 100 percent pancreas to um 25 and it nearly killed her um we, Sorry, we all went, yeah it, it was it was um a bit intense and um i think at the time I'd had a, we, we'd had a lot of stress and strain in the family because my partner had had um, cancer and she had gone through a massive operation, 10 hour operation. Um, and during that time also, uh, we'd lost my mother. Um, you know, so there was just, uh, your yeah, brain so obviously is, yeah, this was a yeah. very vulnerable time for you. You've got a daughter yeah. with health issues, deaths in the family, a yeah. wife with cancer yeah it was dealing with health issues and along comes jonathan davis <laughs> to tell you that mr bledsoe has healed people of serious ailments like cancer and, yeah and was it your impression that he was offering to get bledsoe to help with your daughter then well i i i i all but i i literally asked i said Do you, you put because he did put it in my mind to you know mm -hmm. um and uh, so i said oh you know i said do you think um do you think he'd possibly help my daughter and um literally with that he said yeah i'll go ask him and next minute it was um he came back to me uh, i think a day later he says yeah he'll do it and he said and, um, and exactly what was your understanding so like is christopher bledsoe has some sort of healing superpowers himself or these healings are coming through the entities or aliens that he's claiming to be in contact with um he he believes that he's um you know he's in contact with them and uh they're assisting they're assisting with um the healing it's not him that's doing it he's asking okay. them and so through jonathan davies christopher yeah. bledsoe asked you to do some things and what was that about yeah i had to he asked me to send out a hair sample um mm -hmm. a photograph and an item of clothing which if you think about it is dna yeah that's a little bizarre and it also for those unaware um or maybe you're not aware but you know in ceremonial magic when you're casting spells on people a lock of hair is what you need or what is used yeah quite yeah. often so it, that's pretty bizarre to me that he would ask for a lock of her hair yeah I mean mysteriously the package took eight weeks to get there well that's strange and mm. so after he receives the package what do, do you hear back from Jonathan Davies through 
you know, he's communicating for Bledsoe. What is it that you hear back after he gets the package? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's got the package. I got, I got, I got a text saying, yeah, he's got the package and he's going to let us know. He asked me not to say anything to anyone um, and to keep it an absolute secret um, because um, Chris had had some bad press and, and bad shit before because, um, you know, things hadn't worked out. So, and um, there'd been a lot of people giving uh, Chris grief and I think he'd shut his account through trolls and whatever um, okay. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So um, I sort of said, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll keep quiet about it. Wouldn't say anything. Um, and um, then nothing. Um, but then all of a sudden, obviously, then I started interacting with uh, Chris via Facebook Messenger. And I was getting a lot of very strange texts about what he was doing and going out and praying and talking to angels and uh, oh my goodness um well, yeah I've made I've seen, this, I've seen yeah, some of those uh, I've made them available are, to yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. Made we'll them be sharing those to, with the audience as well yeah yeah I've made them available to you um so I just I I, I wanted you to get a, a picture of the weirdness of it all really and uh, the craziness of it all um so yeah, obviously so this did, did, you know and it's okay i mean you were having a very trying time and and it's very stressful it was um, so it was did you did you like personally believe that this was going to work like he was going to talk to the aliens and your daughter would be healed somehow uh, i was at that time i was in completely two minds because i just was i i was willing to try anything if you know what i mean just to see if it is yeah it was very woo um i was hoping something might happen but absolutely nothing happened <laughs> and uh you know zero and um so your daughter's her, does your daughter diet, didn't have her, any improvement after none the whatsoever healing session no 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 improvement at all diabetes got worse yeah, so I, I guess, I, you know, I also just on a human level wanted to know, like, how is your daughter doing now? She she had to get seen to medically anyway, you know, because all you, mm -hmm. there's no way we were going to leave it in the hands of somebody like Chris Bledsoe, do you know? The lady and the aliens. Yeah. yeah Chris Bledsoe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it was just it, it was just a no-go it became a no-go sure and now um, after after coming out of this experience what do you think of chris bledsoe and all of his various claims of you know contact with aliens and all of that stuff i mean what do you think about him now do you think he's uh, a dangerous cult figure or do you, do you think he's harmless no or? i i think i don't know i think he believes what he believes um whether he sees what he says he sees, I, you know, I've not seen any proper evidence of it. Have you? Have you seen any real evidence no. of it? No. Nobody has. But I have seen evidence of of fakery and and yeah, you know, exactly, and, and, and yeah. including his son, which is troubling to me because I'm a father, so he seems to be including his son in all of these, uh, in this belief system, and we've seen i've seen his son like posting pictures of lego figures on a rock with a flashlight behind it claiming it was an alien and, and other weird strange things that just doesn't don't make any sense and to me as a father i consider this a form of child abuse you know like why would you he, he's messing with his son's head apparently or something that you know it, it doesn't sit well with me as a father that he's involving his, you know if you want to have these wackadoo beliefs that's fine but in my opinion, you should leave your children out of it. You know, yeah, it's just, disturbing uh, to me. Well, I, the story's good, isn't it? You know, for the the family, I think. Yeah, Is and it, they're going to have a know? book. They're going to have a book. Uh, they have Jim Semivan, I think. There's a book coming out of the Bledsoe experiences yeah. and things like that, which is a, a whole other story, I suppose. I saw the cover of it yesterday. Get published on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah um so, so i what, what is your belief now about the ufos and all that stuff because you were obviously once incredibly interested in oh I was yeah i was incredibly interested in the topic uh 
I've 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 stepped away from it and I've been um you know as I say just enjoying doing my photographs and putting them up sure. but like pe people say oh you know Jonathan he's he's mad he sees aliens in the clouds and stuff like that you know it's just <laughs> they just they like well, to slag me off yeah and, well uh, I do you know. I do want to thank you for your courage and for telling your story because my concern is that other people may not have somebody to help pull them out and other people yeah. may get too deep into this belief system and maybe ignore real medical treatment because the aliens are going to do it for them or or some you know this gets dangerous really fast so i want to yeah. thank you for having the courage to tell your story because it may you welcome it may raise awareness and stop them from you know pushing this belief system whether they believe it or not or you know i just think it's dangerous when somebody is having very serious medical issues to uh involve some belief system about aliens just just as i would a faith healer though or or you know i think prayer is helpful great you can pray but you need you need doctors you need medicine you need, you need, yeah, you need specialists medicine. you need absolutely you know, and yeah. this is extremely dangerous especially yeah. if jonathan davies is running around telling people that Chris Bledsoe's somehow magically curing people of cancer. That's very yes, dangerous. Yeah. It's yeah. very dangerous. Yeah, extremely dangerous. If people fall foul of it, as some have, um, you know, it can end up in in a very serious situation, as we've uh, as we've seen with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. All right, friends. So um, I mentioned previously that I've had multiple sources telling me similar stories to the story that we have just heard. And there is more uh, there is more evidence that this is the case that Chris Bledsoe and the cult like group around him are recruiting people telling them that Chris Bledsoe can cure terminal illnesses. We heard this person, Jonathan, detail a story of being asked to send an article of clothing, a lock of hair, and a photo to Chris Bledsoe. This is further supported by multiple sources that I've uh, talked to telling very, very similar stories, and it is further supported uh, by public information. Here we have a Twitter post by Science Bob McGuire. People wishing for help and believing Chris Bledsoe has a path to ask for it. I don't know much about this and found out by personal experience. I'm the lucky one. He tries to help. And here on a tree that has its own wackadoo, to be honest, I, I think it's a wackadoo story. The tree caught on fire, but didn't burn. It burned out the center of it. Uh, I don't think there's anything paranormal or extraordinary about this tree. In fact, I have a cabin in the wilderness of Pennsylvania in the mountains. I can find you 10 similar trees to this with the hollowed out center. But according to Chris Bledsoe, there's, there's some paranormal happenings with this tree. So we see here some seven or eight packages, all packages that were sent to Chris Bledsoe, all from people that are experiencing illnesses and need the help of the aliens or the quote lady unquote. Seven or eight packages here. And uh, just a note to be sure that we are clear here, all of the sources, including the one you just heard from that I spoke with that did send uh, Bledsoe a package of DNA, a clothing, a piece of clothing and a photo apparently Chris Bledsoe puts them in a bag and puts them in this magic tree. Uh, and then he goes and talks to the angels and the aliens uh, to intercede on these people's behalf and cure them of cancer, severe diabetes, dementia, or anything else that ails them. And so far, uh, from everyone I have spoken to, multiple sources, probably four or five, including Jonathan, all of them reported to me that they experienced absolutely no improvement in their medical condition. This, my friends, is where I believe things get dangerous because if you're experiencing a terminal illness, 
I don't think that putting your faith in some guy talking to angels and aliens is a good idea. That's my personal belief. Your beliefs may differ. Uh, and people are free to believe whatever it is that they want to. And we see uh, Recon Strange here replying, do you not see anything unethical in a post like this? Mickey says, does Chris believe that we all have the power within us? I mean, I prayed for my mother to get better and she never did. And I know when it's your time, it's your time. Unfortunate. Somebody asking what's going on here. Uh, but again, the claims are that if you just send Chris Bledsoe a lock of hair, a piece of clothing, and a picture, he'll cure you of whatever ails you. I think that is very, uh, to be honest uh, and and very direct about it, I think that this is extremely uh, immoral, unethical, and problematic. I think that Mr. Bledsoe is being irresponsible here in misleading people and perhaps giving them false hope, especially if they are experiencing a terminal illness. And it's important to remember that all of the UFO celebrities are actively milking this man for stories to sell their gullible followers. Um, by the way, I would certainly invite an interview with Mr. Bledsoe so he can tell his side of the story. Uh, I would be happy to be respectful and kind to him and have him explain this to us in more detail. But the Bledsoe connection is very clear in this Christopher Gray murder because Christopher Gray became obsessed with Chris Bledsoe and the so-called lady that Christopher, that Chris Bledsoe talks about. And Christopher Gray was obsessed with using his obsession, uh, or excuse me, using his association with Bledsoe, his friendship with him, to get to the top tier UFO celebrities that he knew Bledsoe interacted with and communicated with frequently. Christopher Gray was somehow convinced that he could climb the so-called ladder of UFO land and get to the highest people in UFO land and that they then would share their so-called core secrets directly with him. Very, very disturbing connection. And remember that Christopher Gray on the day of the murder would mention the lady multiple times. And I believe he's referring to Christopher, Chris Bledsoe's lady, this mysterious entity that Bledsoe claims to be in communication with that helps him heal people of terminal cancer. And to be clear, uh, I have seen no evidence or proof of any miraculous cures coming from the Bledsoe alleged cult. On to our next piece of the story. So we have established clearly that there is a connection between the murderer, Christopher Gray, and the Chris Bledsoe so-called or alleged UFO cult. We have heard from a witness about Bledsoe making claims through his intermediaries. And I have also spoken with many, many people who have told me that they were approached by either Jonathan Davis or many other people in this group and, quote, recruited, unquote, into this group around Chris Bledsoe all of which uh, glorify and even uh, think him to be some sort of UFO savior or deity or bridge between our species and other species, including angels and demons and, and aliens and interdimensional beings. Um, it gets very, uh, very woo very quickly. So, uh, On February 23rd, 2021, Christopher Gray, by all accounts, finally snapped. And, uh, and he had been unraveling up to this point, becoming increasingly more and more unstable. And more and more, he was more and more threatening violence, warning people as well members of UFO Twitter, that 
uh, people were out to get him. People were out to harm him and kill him. And people were trying to create the Antichrist because he was in, but he was in communication with the lady and the lady and him were going to stop the Antichrist and the end of the world. So Christopher Gray, uh, after being obsessed with UFOs and aliens and all these UFO celebrities, fake stories, those are, that's my opinion that they're fake stories he was obsessed with. Um, and he was obsessed completely and totally with Bledsoe and the lady. Gray finally snapped and has on February 23rd, what can only be described as a total psychotic breakdown. He called his brother with warnings about hurting people. He recorded this call and it was sent to some of the biggest names in the so-called world of UFOs. And we'll have a look at that list after we take a listen to this. Now, this call may be disturbing to some viewers, fair warning. Um, this, is, this is right at the time that Christopher Gray murdered his father, stabbed his father over 110 times. This is the audio call, which Christopher Gray recorded, put on Twitter, and then emailed to this huge list of UFO celebrities. Many of those UFO celebrities were people he had interacted with, communicated with on Twitter, communicated with via email, and more. Uh, this is the actual audio call, and, and this, I believe, is the Truth Seekers exclusive. I'm not aware that anyone else has published or released this audio call. Uh, we uh, publish it here uh, for the purposes of demonstrating what happened that day, how Christopher Gray unraveled totally. And it's very disturbing. Um, this is the call with his brother right at the time of the murder, friends. Oh, he's, he's having to be asleep at the moment. Is he? Uh. So what's this about your picture? Is it you're getting paranoid about? Hmm? What are you accusing me of? I'm not accusing you of anything, Stu. Um, I'm accusing Dad, though. What? Try to create, try to create the Antichrist. What? No, 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 man. <sighs> Dad is a harmless old man. Is he? Yes. So who? Well, get reality, man. Just come back to reality first, like. I have, but get, I but guess what? Have you slept last night? No. But guess what? Don't no, ever, don't, 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 don't ever go there. Don't ever go there. I've been in touch with the Pentagon and everyone, mate. Right, so, hang on. Right, so what do you do to Dad? Well, I don't... He, uh, he tried something with me and oh. I ended up hitting him. Hitting him? Like... Yeah. I, I just hit him. He's fine. He's fine, Punched but... Him? Yes. You said you smacked him about a bit. Yeah, I did. Because I don't like being murdered and try to be created as the Antichrist. Guess yeah, what? Man. Guess what? You got Jesus and God, and there's fucking tons of UFOs flying around. If anyone ever fucking tries anything, this place is getting burnt to a crisp. And guess what? There's some, there, there is something in my neck, right? There's something and I, in your neck. And I don't know what it is, all right? It's like an implant, okay? I don't know what it is. If anyone touches me, comes anywhere near me, if I ever see... You see, there was a big mistake. There was a, a guy that took my photograph and they started killing people, Stuart. They started killing all my friends. You don't fucking do that, okay? All right, because guess what? There's going to be a big fucking trial and it's going to get messy. Now, Lady Justice, if you've ever heard of the lady before, she's actually my teacher. And she's linked to the Ashtar Command, okay? See when the day the Earth stood still happened? Are you still there, Stu? Uh -huh. when, uh, when, when the, when the uh, day the Earth stood still, there was a warning, all right? You do not go out and cause trouble with your neighbours. When you're crusading around the universe, 
causing havoc, all right, um, eventually God will step in, okay? So listen, everything's fine. Dad's going to be fine. He's not that hurt, okay? I made sure of it. But I, unfortunately, I've pretty much told the world a little bit. Or the right people. I've not told the world that's, yet. Eh? Hang on, that's our, that's our bus driver. Hang on. Okay, good luck. I'll phone you back. No worries. There's no drama. There doesn't have to be any drama at all. But see, when you try to create the Antichrist and you get Jesus instead, right, you're, you're in trouble. I need to go. I need you're to go. in trouble, okay? You're going to be fine, Dad, okay? But anyone comes near here, and there's going to be serious trouble. What is, my friends, most disturbing about this call, it is made right at the time Christopher Gray murdered his father by stabbing him over 110 times. And I'm not sure that you caught it, but during this call, Christopher Gray mentioned someone who took his photograph. We have seen examples of Chris Bledsoe asking people for a photograph and a DNA sample. And I was told by sources, which would not do an on-camera interview, that Christopher Gray is one of the people who sent Chris Bledsoe a photograph and a DNA sample and a piece of his clothing. This, I cannot verify, through more than one source, but I am including that information here and I will be following up trying to find more verification that Christopher Gray is one of the people that indeed sent Chris Bledsoe a photo and a DNA sample for whatever reason. What I can establish is that Christopher Gray was obsessed with Bledsoe and his stories of the lady. Even more disturbing than this call is that after he recorded this call, he sent this recorded call to some of the biggest so-called UFO celebrities in the world through an email list. We have that email list and I will share it with you. Many of the people on this list are people that Christopher Gray met on UFO, UFO Twitter and had been communicating with for some time. These people included many people we've mentioned before whose stories he had been consuming and obsessed with for some time. Most notably included and sent this recorded call the day of the murder were people like Tom DeLong, Nick Pope, George Knapp, Kit Green, Robert Morningstar, Jim Pennison, Luis Elizondo, Christopher Mellon, Eric Davis, Bruce McAfee, Danny Silva, Kit Green, and many, many more well-known so-called UFO celebrities from the world of UFOs. I will share the list with you. And uh, it's important also to note that I reached out to many of the people on this list for comment, why did Christopher Gray on the day of the murder send you this recording? What communications did you have with Mr. Christopher Gray leading up to the murder? And so far, not a single person that I have reached out to, I've reached out to many on this list, uh, have returned any communication with me. And I did request a comment about this but have gotten no reply. So this is the email list that he sent it to, and we can see many people that I mentioned. Here's Nick Pope, Tom DeLong. We have uh, Luis Elizondo is here on the list. We have uh, Kit Green is on the list. We have uh, Christopher Mellon and uh, many, many more friends. So this lit, this message, this recorded phone call was sent along with quite a warning of from Christopher Gray on the day of the murder. I tried my very best to find out exactly why each of these people were included on the list. 
but was unable to get any definitive answers despite a really Herculean effort at researching. I researched each of the people on the list, tried to find out why he would include them. Again, here we see people like George Knapp uh, and many, many others that he sent this recording to right at the time of the murder. Here we see Jack Sarfati, uh, Robert Morningstar, and many, many other well-known names in the world of UFOs. Um, and here is the text body of the message. He put subject Satan and the anti and Christ and the Christ Antichrist. He says to all these UFO celebrities and people that he sent this message to, the man talking is my brother, who maybe took part in trying to explode something bad and frame Jesus to make the Antichrist. God is not happy. I can forgive you all, but the lady is here. Again, a reference, I believe, to Chris Bledsoe's so-called lady, the mysterious angelic entity that Chris Bledsoe calls the lady. She will judge people. It's Ashtar command stuff. Day the earth stood still. Pease my name is Christopher Lindsay Gray, sadly son of Alexander Gray. He's fine, but nobody come near me. There are lots of time travelers here watching everything you do. So don't even think about doing bad things ever. Never lie to me. It will be well, it will be documented. He goes on to say, I don't like being tried to be repeatedly framed and murdered. It gets boring eventually. God is watching all of you and can see what you're thinking. So please never come near me. Something is inside my neck. Again, a reference to a so-called alien implant that he believed that he had. He goes on to say, I don't know what it is. I have no idea. L put it there, or somebody did. Never get caught going against the true God. Satan is not the true God. It was a trick. There are lots of time traveling races watching all of your actions, also known as Ashtar Command. And anyone familiar with UFOs will be familiar with the term Ashtar Command. It is a reference to uh, a group of aliens. It has been referenced many, many times in UFO land. He goes on to say, please be nice and nobody ever dream of harming another innocent. That is, here we go, one of the Bledsoe's cousins, etc., etc. touch anybody linked to me and your trials won't go down well. E.T. can read thoughts. Don't ever think of harming me or my family. This is a message directly to the Bledsoe's. He is apparently convinced that the Bledsoe's are trying to harm him or his family. Speak to the queen about it if you have any questions. Seriously, kind regards. Christopher Lindsey Gray, also known on Twitter as at UFO underscore researcher or at UFO underscore researchers or at UFO researchers. Very disturbing. And again, we see that he references the lady and the Bledsoe's directly. And as previously stated, I have talked to many people who told me that Chris Bledsoe was convinced that or excuse me, that Christopher Gray was convinced that the Bledsoe's were somehow out to get him and that he believed that he was in communication with the mysterious lady that Chris Bledsoe has talked about for a long time now. Now, uh, we're almost finished with our presentation. Uh, it's important to note that I did reach out to some of the names on that list that this message was sent to, to ask them why they felt they were sent this message or what they knew about Christopher Gray. And uh, at the time of this broadcast, no one, not one person has returned my emails or requests for comment. I am releasing this list on my, on my Twitter. You can follow me at Stephen Cambion on Twitter. Maybe some of you or other researchers can succeed in getting some comment out of these people where I alone have failed, despite really trying my very best. 
Next on the day of the murder, right after Christopher Gray stabbed his father over 110 times, what many don't know is that he live streamed a video on Twitter and the video is incredibly disturbing. The video shows him standing over his bleeding, gasping, dying father. For obvious reasons, though I am in possession of the video, I cannot play that video here, nor would I. I considered playing just the audio of that video, but even that is incredibly disturbing. Uh, and to be very honest with all of you, I wish I have never seen this video or even heard it. The audio even is incredibly disturbing because you can hear his father desperately gasping for air and slowly dying as he bled to death on the floor. And you can see that clearly in the video. For the purposes of this broadcast, I created a recreation of the audio portion of that video. Here for the first time made public is a recreation of that video. And we can hear what Christopher said as he stood over his dying father that he had just stabbed over 110 times. This of course is a recreation, but it was made directly from a transcript that I transcribed from the original video. You all right? What has happened to you? You hurt yourself? You don't try and kill God. You don't try and kill Jesus. You and your Rothschilds. And your queenie bitch can't. You're all dead. You're all going to confess. You're all going to get fucking banished. Justice across the universe. Lady Justice. Is going to come and see you very soon. You're all going to come to Fall Girk and you're going to confess. Those Sinclair cunts are going to learn not to fuck with time travelers. You all right? What has happened to you? Did you hurt yourself? You don't try and kill God. Most disturbingly, the video of Christopher Gray after having stabbed his father over 110 times, this video with this audio, not this audio, with the original audio saying these things, as he stood over his gasping, bleeding, dying father, was sent to a huge list of UFO celebrities. He both DM'd it to those people that he had, that had, given him, I suppose, access to their DMs or had open DMs. And he posted the video on Twitter and added a huge list of UFO celebrities, including most or many of the people on the list that we have shared tonight. And again, we have reached out for comment to many of those people and have received zero, no replies whatsoever. Uh, now, there's just uh, a few por a portions of the story that remain. Um, right after Christopher Gray stabbed his father, he live streamed a video on Twitter. And uh, again, we have played a recreation of the audio transcribed from the original video. Uh, after live streaming him, Standing over his dying father, he sent this disturbing video of him and his dying father to over, I believe, over 100 people on Twitter by both adding people and Twitter DM. And again, I reached out for comment to many of those people who were sent this very disturbing video of Christopher Gray and his dying father. But at the time of this broadcast, not one person has returned my request for comment on this. So... Uh, after the murder, 
I found substantial evidence that Jonathan Davies and others close to the Bledsoe group, apparently uh, they have actively encouraged people on UFO Twitter not to comment on this story or to talk about this at all. And we do have supporting evidence for that in the form of uh, Twitter screenshots. People close to uh, Bledsoe and his group were telling people, don't talk about the videos or messages that Christopher Gray sent. In fact, don't talk about the murder or Christopher Gray at all, especially not publicly. And why not? Because apparently, according to those people, talking about this would be bad for disclosure, many said. So, including the person who first brought me th this story, uh, many have said that there is a cover-up of this event and the fact that all of these people from the world of UFOs were, some would say, directly involved, others would say, uh, you know, involved at the end of the story. And is it true that none of the UFO celebrities who were sent this disturbing phone call or video of Christopher Gray standing over his bleeding, gasping, dying father has publicly talked about or commented about this event? Yes, that is true. I have been unable to find anybody on these on this list that was sent these disturbing this disturbing call on the day of the murder or this disturbing video of a dying man. None of them have talked about this publicly. None of them have commented on it. And people are free to make up their own minds as to why none of these people talked about this or commented about it. People are free to make up their own minds about people publicly telling people or privately telling people not to talk about this. And people are free to make up their own minds about why this happened. But to me, I have made up my own mind and their silence on this whole story, essentially, uh, especially about being essentially sent a video of a dying man. To me, their silence on this story speaks volumes. After all, it's a pretty traumatic event to be sent a video of a man standing over a dying man. Why not talk about it? Why not comment it on it? comment on it at least. If people knew the whole story here, many said that it would be bad for disclosure. But I believe that many of these UFO celebrities believe that talking about this or even acknowledging that this happened would be bad for business. And finally tonight, there is an, in, there is an issue concerning a controversial figure named Moran Lerner. Uh, I guess it would be safe to say that uh, one of the first people to bring me this story was one Moran Lerner. For those unaware, there was a blog post uh, some time ago about uh, his, let's just say, use of many different Twitter accounts some time ago. And on those Twitter accounts, this person, Moran Lerner, was telling multiple stories to multiple people. Um, essentially, many believe LARPing or pretending to be multiple people at once. Concerning this, his, his story, he, he brought me the initial story, which, yes, I wanted to research, but he brought me his own story. And he tells a fantastical story about working for a secret, shadowy, quasi-government and private intelligence organization. And he claims that that organization sent him and over a hundred other intelligence operatives to infiltrate UFO Twitter and save people from these dangerous UFO cults. I have been, so far, unable to corroborate any parts of his story. And because I was unable to corroborate his stories, which, to be honest, make him into some kind of hero here and also conveniently make his critics into the villains of the story, I did not include his story or stories tonight. But as I told him privately, and I will tell everyone publicly, he is free to put out his stories himself. 
But here and tonight, I only put out factual information that I could substantiate, verify, and obtain multiple sources for. Now, uh, as of uh, recently, I hear some very troubling things about him, including how he is sending people an early version of the video we started tonight's broadcast with. However, that is extremely problematic because the video he, he is sending people includes complete factual inaccuracies in it. He is sharing an early version of that video that contains facts not supported by my subsequent investigation. And because that video, the first version of the video we started tonight's broadcast with contained inaccurate information that he himself gave me, I took that video down and I reworked it to reflect only the facts and evidence that I am personally able to confirm as true and, and as accurate as possible. Further, I hear that he is now telling people that I now am going to be part of some grand conspiracy or cover-up about this story, which I categorically deny, and, and that is not true at all. In fact, I have spent uh, more time on this story than any story that I have ever broadcast here because I want it to get it right. And tonight, my friends, I present it to you, not only the core story that the regular media brought you, but the deeper, darker story. And I have spent months of my life investigating this story. Tonight, I presented you with facts and evidence that I can confirm, verify, and corroborate with multiple sources and diligent research efforts. I did not include in tonight's broadcast his stories, Moran Lerner's stories, because I feel they are just that, unprovable, unverifiable stories. And in truth, I do feel that Moran may be using a, a schizophrenic tragedy to do damage control for his own recently very damaged reputation and to raise his own profile uh, perhaps to create or control some narrative that again conveniently paints him as the hero of this story somehow without any evidence other than his own word. He is also apparently attacking anyone who disagrees with him or his version of events as being someone covering up this murder and uh to be clear, I just respectfully disagree with him. I spent a great deal of time interviewing him and hearing him out. Some would say I wasted a great deal of time hearing him out and hearing his versions of, of the story, which again, I, I can't verify. The, the only data point we have is him telling these stories. And I thought that insufficient for inclusion here. So after thorough invest investigation into this entire story and a great deal of time and effort, I am still unable to substantiate, corroborate, or verify his stories surrounding these events. So I chose not to include them here. If people are interested, I hear he's sending around some 20-page uh, document that he wrote, again, stating that he's some kind of operative from a secret intelligence organization and he was sent in to UFO Twitter to get close to people on UFO Twitter and to somehow save those affected by these dangerous UFO cults. It's a great story, but despite all my efforts to do so, it remains just a story from a man who apparently has told many stories in the past that were not true. So if you're interested in, in his story, you can find that and you can make up your own mind. But as for my, myself, I have included only information and facts about this story, which I can verify through multiple sources and references. And with that tonight, friends, we will conclude our presentation. So, friends, uh, that's all I got for you. And um, I want to thank each of the kind people uh, who generously helped me to... Uh, learn as much as I could about this situation and this story. Um, very, very kind people. And, and thanks to uh, Jonathan Young, who did the on-camera interview. Very brave of him, considering, as I hear it, at least, people are being threatened not to talk about this at all. 
and that is wrong. And uh, so I applaud him for his courage and for helping us to establish some of the facts that we established in this story tonight. And, and uh, I thank each and every one of you for joining us. I want to thank our kind and generous benefactors, our super chatters, super stickers, uh, PayPal pledgers, cash appers, uh, all of you kind and generous people, you Patreon people, you channel members, you really do help us keep the show going. And uh, I am blown away by your generosity and support. So that's all I got for you, friends. Until next time, my name is Stephen Cambion. Good night, and God bless all of you.